Hi, this is Pam from the Birch Cottage blog. In this video tutorial, I'd like to show you how to sew a casserole dish cozy. The supplies that you will need are some cotton fabric, cotton batting or Insulbrite, thread, some pins or wonder clips, scissors, a rotary cutter and cutting mat, and of course, you will need your sewing machine. To make this cozy, you will need about a half a yard of fabric. The first thing you'll want to do is to download the pattern from the Birch Cottage blog. If you're making the 9 by 13 casserole dish, you will attach pieces A1, A2, and B. For the 8.5 by 8.5 casserole dish, you'll attach pieces A1 and A2. Once you have your pattern pieces cut out and taped together, you're ready to lay down your pattern and whether you pin it in place or you use pattern weights <clears throat> and then you will cut out your fabric. You will cut out two pieces of cotton fabric for your cozy. I used contrasting fabric on one side so I did one piece of this larger print with the dragonflies and then I did another print um, that just had the flowers on it and then I cut out two pieces of my cotton batting. You can also use Insulbrite in this project if you want. I have used both. I just prefer uh, the cotton fabric. So again, use your rotary cutter or your scissors, whatever you're comfortable with to cut out your pattern. Again, you're gonna cut out two pieces of cotton fabric for your casserole cozy. And here I'm cutting out the pattern for the nine by 13 casserole dish. And when you cut out your fab or the uh, batting, um, what I usually do is I just cut it out the same size as my fabric and then I go back over it and trim off maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, just that helps to reduce the bulk in your seams. So here I gave up using my rotary cutter and just decided to trim out these curves with my scissors. And you can tell I've just got one piece of fabric there. So my fabric when you print it out, it will show you a fold on the actual pattern itself, and you can certainly do that, or you can cut out two pieces of every piece of the pattern and then tape them together, as I have done here, and make one large pattern, whatever you prefer to do. So there's one side of my fabric, and then I have the other side, like I said, which I did with contrasting fabric but you could certainly use the same fabric on either side, on both sides if you want. And although I did show you two pieces of that same fabric, that was because I was making multiple uh, cozies for these casserole dishes. And now I'm gonna cut out my uh, batting. This is a fusible uh, batting. It's not what I normally like to use. I do like to use the cotton batting and I like to use the Insulbrite, but this is what I had when I was putting together this video tutorial. So that's why you see this fusible interfacing or fusible fleece. So I'm using paper weights here or fabric weights here that um, actually made by crocheting around some rocks. And anyways, I'm cutting out the batting for the casserole dish cozy. And you will need two pieces of the batting, <clears throat> one for the top, one for the bottom, and the same thing for your fabric. Two pieces of fabric, two pieces of batting. So now I have my batting all cut out, and again, I have two pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do, since I'm using fusible fleece is I'm going to take my fabric over to my ironing board and I'm going to iron the wrong side of the fabric first. Then I will lay the fusible interfacing on top of the fabric, on top of the wrong side of the fabric. I'll use a cloth over all of that and give it a good pressing. 
If you're not using fusible fleece, you can just pin your batting to your fabric. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do these top stitching uh, diagonally from corner to corner and then the other corner to corner and then straight down the middle to kind of quilt these pieces of fabric to the batting. So I'm going to increase my stitch to 3.5 and starting at one corner I'm going to stitch straight across to the other corner. If you want to you can take a ruler and a fabric pen and mark where you need to stitch. But I just kind of eyeballed it and again I'm using a long top stitch 3.5 and I'm going from one corner to the other corner and I did that so that it forms an X. And then after I stitch diagonally across the fabric I'm going to find the center of it lengthwise and I'm going to stitch straight down the middle of that fabric again just doing a top stitch straight down the middle. And then I will repeat that with the other piece of fabric. And there you can see my stitches. It's kind of an X with a stitch straight down the middle. Okay, and like I said, you will repeat that for the second piece of fabric. And now what I'm going to do is sew the darts or the corners of each of the cozies. So where the V's are, you will line up right sides together and simply stitch one quarter of an inch seam allowance to close those corners or to make those darts. And you'll do that, you'll have four of them in each of the cozy fabric pieces. Again, right sides together, quarter inch, be sure to uh, back stitch the beginning and the ending of your stitches to secure your stitches and you're going to do that eight times. And then once you have all your corner darts stitched, you're going to pin or clip your fabric pieces together, right sides together. Just line up all the edges, line up your corner seams, and just clip those in place. And then when you start stitching, you're going to stitch on one of the long sides and you'll leave about a three inch opening for turning. So start somewhere, you know, an inch or two away from the middle of the long side and then stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around until you get back and then be sure to leave a three inch opening. Uh, as I begin stitching, I'm going to back stitch to secure my stitches and I'm going to do that quarter of an inch all the way around my stitches, all the way around. Once I have that done, I will turn those fabric pieces right side out. I'm going to press them real good and then I'm going to top stitch which is what you see I'm doing here, really close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. I'm just top stitching uh, all the way around. And this will close that opening where you turn the pieces and it will give it a nice finished look. Now the next thing that I did is I <coughs> quilted all of the pieces together. Um, if, I, if you take the long ends and you fold them and then you press it and then you take the short ends and you fold them in and you press them, it creates kind of a wall um, for your casserole dish and I use that pressing as a guideline to do my stitching. So I stitch from corner to corner, from that corner down the long side to the next corner all the way around the casserole dish, stitching all of the layers together right along that fold line that I created when I pressed my fabric. If you have questions about that, just leave them in the comments below. I did not get a picture of that or a video of that, so I apologize. But essentially, you just want to stitch all those layers together all the way around the per inside perimeter of the casserole dish cozy. And once you have that done, you're Cozy is ready to be used. It is reversible, it's machine washable, 
and the handles are nice and long so that they fold up over the sides of the handle and can be used as a pot holder. So it has a built-in pot holder with these casserole dish cozies. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to like it below and be sure to visit me over on the Birch Cottage blog and subscribe to uh, my newsletter. Thanks so much.